This one I'm going to leave alone. Is sine positive in this quadrant? No. I'm going to make it negative. Is tangent positive in this quadrant? No. I'm going to make it negative, and that's all I'm doing right here. So I can guarantee you my answers are going to be negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half, and negative root 3. But that's it. Sine of 5 pi over 3 is that, because we already did the reference angle, now we know the sine. Cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. Why? Because I already did the legwork, I know the value, I'm just trying to figure out the sine. If cosine is still positive there, notice, if you're doing a reference angle, it's all based on quadrant run. One, run. Run. <laughs> run from this trigonometry stuff. If, if you're doing a reference angle, it's all based on quadrant one. That means every number you're going to get is positive. That's why you have to use ASTC to find out whether or not it's actually negative. Do you see the difference there? That's the point. So here I know cosine, cosine remains positive. I know sine and tangent do not. So in order to get from the pi over 3 to the 5 pi over 3, it's not, I'm not Harry Potter, I'm not the math version of that, right? This isn't magic. It's just using the fact that you used a reference angle, and now you know that if it's in a certain quadrant, what's positive and what's not. Does it make more sense now to you? Yeah. Good. That was less anticlimactic than I wanted. I wanted like a, woo, I get it. <laughs> Can we try that once? No, I'm just kidding. You have to do, woo, I get it. But hopefully the energy level will go up for you someday. How were you when you took your classes? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I took math 4C in summer school. So that, that was literally a, a six week blur. I do not remember hardly any of it. I had to go relearn it there. Awesome. <laughs> don't, don't do that to yourself if you're going to do anything with mathematics. If you don't, if you don't give a crap about this, sure, take it during summer school. But if you actually want to use it and you're going to have to use it, don't take it during summer school. Oh my god, unless you're like a superstar at math. Some of you are. Do it. Fine. I wasn't. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about today in the last about three minutes is a little bit of graphing where this stuff comes from. Uh, what I need you to do is read through or at least be familiar with your basic trig graphs. Okay, I need you to know what sine looks like. What cosine looks like, what tangent looks like. Sine goes like this, and cosine goes like this, and tangent goes like this. Okay? And know where they start, what their period is, things like that. You need to know that at least. If you don't know that, you won't be successful with this graphing part. So we're going to graph a couple different types of functions here. We're going to graph things of the form y equals a times sine of some angle or cosine of some angle. And then I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated than that. Okay, we're going to graph another form probably next time where we're going to make this a little bit more advanced. So for instance, our, our examples for this. I'm going to graph y equals sine x, just our, our standard sine curve, and y equals, let's see, uh, 2 sine of 4x. And we're going to see the difference between these two graphs. Firstly, let's talk about sine uh, right off the bat. Where does sine start? That, that one does, yeah. How high does sine go? What's the period for sine? That means it oscillates every 2 pi. Why? Well, it's, just, it's on a circle, right? It's going to come back to the same thing every time you go around that circle. That means something important is also going to happen at pi. That means something important is probably going to happen at pi over 2. And something important is probably going to happen at 3 pi over 2. Tell me, if sine starts at 0, what, what's sine of pi? Oh boy, go refresh your memory on that. Uh, what was it? Everyone should just be nailing that. What's sine of pi? You're just copying everyone else. Yeah, you're lucky. It's 0. What's sine of 2 pi? Yeah, of course, because it's going back to the same thing as 0. So if sine of 0 is 0, sine of 2 pi has to be 0. What's sine of pi over 2? Tell me that. Mm -hmm. And uh, sine of 3 pi over 2? Lucky guess. 
So our function has this nice curve. This is where we get it from. Like that. What we're going to find out next time is what this number does and what that number does and how it changes it. Does it stretch it out? Does it compress it? Does it make the amplitude go different? We're going to find all that out next time. Then we'll talk about this in combination with some translations. Uh, that will about end our day and we'll, we'll go on to the, the last section of our review and finally get to some calculus stuff. Are you excited? Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Well, happy Monday. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue talking about what we were talking about, which is graphing some trig functions. Now, the basic ones, I've asked you to read through that. You should know what sine and cosine and tangent look like. This is our, our basic sine graph. What we're going to do today is figure out what all these numbers do to these graphs, how we can manipulate that. So here's the deal. Whenever we're looking at something of this form, like uh, a sine bx or a cosine of bx, that a and that b, those do something. The a in front of our sine or our cosine, that actually will give you the, do you know? Amplitude. That's the amplitude. That's exactly right. So our a, actually the, the absolute value of our a, is going to give us our amplitude. And we mean amplitude from the x-axis. So that's why when we graph sine of x, well, there's only a 1 out there. The a is, in fact, 1, which means that our amplitude is one up and, and one down from the x-axis. Does that make sense to you? What's our b in this case? Our, our b gives you the, well actually it's the period, uh, but what's the b in this particular example? The b here is four, what's the b here? And we know that in our case, our, our period is actually two pi. So what we're gonna get from our, our b is our period. So if our b in this case is 1 and our period happens to be 2 pi, then the period is really given by 2 pi divided by b. That gives us how often we oscillate or how often we come back to repeating the same exact graph. Is it in that specific example or is that? That's in general. So in, in general, your amplitude is given by the absolute value of a. So in our case, let's, let's look at this example right here. Uh, so this is our kind of our notes for right now. What is our a in our, our case for our new example that we're going to do in just a minute? Two. 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 So our amplitude, absolute value of two is two. That means it should be going too high and too low from the x-axis. Are you with me on that? Okay, so for our example, I'll write this out again. <laughs> By the way, the, we need a muffler for your, for your sneezes. As you go, <laughs> just like that. Shifting gears. <laughs> That'd be cool. To invent that. See? Money right there. Red box and mouth mufflers. <laughs> Done. Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, this works the same exact the same exact way for A cosine B. So those those are the same exact letters. This works the same way. So let's look at y equals two sine of four x. And you've already told me that my amplitude, my A is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. That means we're going to be going up to 2 and down to negative 2. That's what the amplitude says here. We also need to find the period. The period is given by 2 pi over b. What's the, what was the b in this case again? 4. So let's do that. Can you simplify 2 pi over 4? Over 2. I need you all to be familiar with how to get the amplitude and the period. Nod your head if you're okay on getting the amplitude and the period in this case. It's good. All right. Amplitude comes from the A. It's just an absolute value. The, the period is given by 2 pi over whatever our B is. We simplify that. Here's what it means. It means that this example, our, the, the stuff in the black writing here, this is going to oscillate or, or repeat every pi over 2. How you do this... If our entire period is 2 pi here, what we're saying is our, our entire period is pi over 2 here. It's going to come back to that point after cycling. That's going to be one complete cycle. So can you tell me how many cycles I'm going to get in this range? Four, four. four cycles. That's four <coughs> ranges of pi over 2, four intervals of pi over 2. Does that make sense to you? So the period says how often you come back to normal. So it's going to go up, down, and back up. Then up, down, and back up. 
four times in this span. What did this essentially do to it? Did this stretch it out or did that compress it? Compressed. Very much so compressed it. So what this did is it compressed it and it stretched it vertically. That's what the amplitude did. So here's how you can figure out how to graph it though. It's going to start at the same spot. So we're, we're going to be at zero, zero. We're going to go up, down, and back up. What happens with these trig functions like sine and cosine is the interesting stuff happens at the midpoints. So if we're coming back to normal at pi over 2, something interesting is going to happen at pi over 4. That's midway between there. Does that make sense to you? So pi over 4, something interesting is going to happen. Okay, and that, that means, I know this is really small, it's hard for you guys to see it, so this is pi over 4 right there. Pi over 4. How about midway between 0 and pi over 4? How much is that? Pi over 8. Pi over 8. So let's cut that in half. Something interesting is going to happen at pi over 8 and 3 pi over 8. That's between here. Pi over 8 and 3 pi over 8. Now, here's how, how you, you go the rest of the way. We know that the, the original function crossed midway between the R2 endpoints here. So midway between at this pi over 4, that's where we're going to be crossing the x-axis again. Can you tell me where the peak of my sine function is going to take place? But the peak of my, well, it's going to be a level of 2, sure, but what's the x value of that? Do you know? Pi over 8. because we know something interesting is going to happen there. In this case, the peak was at pi over 2. If we scrunch this all together, the peak's now going to be at pi over 8. Where's the, the lowest valley going to be? Where's that going to have to take place? Sure, that's, that's at this one right here. So let me recap well, for real this time, not just to you know, recap. Uh, what we do in this case is we find our A and we find our B. The A is going to give you the amplitude, how high and how low you go. The B is going to give you your period, how often you cycle back to the same exact value and repeat your whole nice function. So in our case here, we know we're going to cycle within a very small window of pi over 2. We know we're going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. That's going to be my highest and my lowest point. How you figure out the rest of it is just the midpoints of that interval. At the midpoint of that interval, you know something's got to happen. In our case, we're going to be crossing the x-axis again. At the midpoints of those intervals, we're going to be reaching our maximum and our minimum value, respectively. So then we can graph it. It's just a normal sine function, only we've stretched it this way and compressed it this way. Now, do if you're okay with that? Okay, so we're going to be going like this. Wow, that's... Like that. That's our compression. We could fit four of those in that range of space. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this so far? Okay. Would you like to try one more example to see this before we move on to a translation? Yes. Okay, why don't you see if you can do this one? I'm giving you 0.5x, but it could easily be x over 2 or 1 half x, okay? So 0.5, 1 half, or x over 2, that all means the same exact thing. Here's what I would like out of you. Right now what I want you to do, draw yourself a nice looking graph and draw the original cosine function, just what cosine looks like.